Hi guys, it's Leo from MediaWay here. Today we're going to be animating this beautiful Skoda Kodiak model, get it drifting around the track. Everything in this tutorial is free and included in the links below. And this tutorial is a follow-on from a previous tutorial about car rigging. So if you haven't looked at that yet, it might be worth checking that one out first. The Skoda car model has been kindly supplied by Polygonic and it's from their traffic add-on which also has a range of pre-rigged cars that you can use, plus boats, planes, motorbikes. I'll put a link in the description below. Okay, we'll start by looking at the file we finished in the rigging tutorial. You can see here we've got our lovely Skoda Kodiak model driving down a path with the rigger car animation. If you haven't already, make sure you've got the Rigger Car extension and the Blender Kit extension installed as we'll be using both of these. I'll put the links in below and to install these go to the Edit menu, Preferences, click Install and then find the file you downloaded and install from there. So at the minute, if I press play with the space bar, you can see the car moves along the path. So what we're going to do, we're going to modify this path to make it a little bit bigger and more in the shape of a road. Press seven on your number pad to get to top view. Click on your path, tab into edit mode. G to grab, move the first handle, rotate it so it's that way. Grab the second handle. G to grab the third handle. Let's just finesse this a little bit better. The next thing we need is a road to drift on. So we're gonna use Blender Kit. So click on Blender Kit. Type in road. The first link that comes up that says procedural two lanes road profile will be perfect. So we'll grab that and drag it down. We'll also just rename these curves so we know what's happening. So the, this first curve is what the car goes along. So we'll call that car curve. The procedural two lanes profile also has a curve. It's called road shape. And we'll edit this so it roughly fits the same path that the car drives along. Seven for top view. Make sure you've got the road shape curve selected. Tab into edit view. And just as before, grab each curve, just scale it, rotate it as necessary to match the road. Okay, once you've done that, you should have a nice road curve that smoothly matches more or less the car curve. It doesn't need to be exact. We're going to have some little bollards at the side of the road to make it a bit more interesting. So click the road profile, and then press tab to go into edit mode. And you'll see because this road profile is made up of a big array, you'll actually see each section is just made up of one small piece over here. So if you press A to select all the pieces, then press period on your number keypad, you'll zoom into it. So we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to extend the side of the pavement to make it a bit wider. And we're going to add some little bollards in just to make it a bit more interesting. If you press 1 on your keyboard, you'll go into vertex mode. Select the vertices at the side of the road, press 7 to go into top view, G to grab and press X to constrain to the X axes. Same on the other side, G to grab X to move them on the X axes. And you'll see now if we zoom out, the road profile has got a lot wider, which is going to be useful for us in a minute. We're also going to add, if I just shift and right click to move the 3D cursor, shift and A to add a cube. Um, we're going to S to scale, Just press your period key to zoom in, uh, we're going to need to move it up, G to grab, Z to move up, scale it a bit more, so we kind of want this in the size and shape of a bollard. Press 3 to go into face view selection, G to grab, Y to grab on the Y axis, going to S to scale, if you hover your mouse over the object we've just made and press L, you select all of those linked objects. S to scale, seven for top view. Let's just grab it so it's kind of close to the side of the road but not touching. And we just scale on the Z axis, S to scale, Z for, Z for the Z axis. Grab, Z, Z, we move it down on the Z axis. So it's just intersecting where the pavement is. And these are going to be our little bollards at the side of the road. We also want them on the other side of the road as well. So you can press 7. While it's still selected, Shift D, 
press Y to con X to constrain to the X axis and move it onto the other side of the road. Now we can see we've got lots of little bollards at the side of the road as well. We'll choose a material for them. So if you look at, if you hover over both of them and press L, so they're both selected like this. Click on where it says, click on your material tab, click on concrete water grout and then click assign and that'll assign that material to the bollards. We can tab out of edit mode now. And as you can see, we've got a nice little road with some bollards at the side of it. The next thing we're going to do is add a HDRI for some lighting. So press N on your keyboard to see this side panel. In Blender Kit, click HDRI, press N for your toolbar, click on Blender Kit, click on HDRIs, and then you can actually uh, you can actually choose pretty much anyone you like. The one I've selected for this tutorial is called Zheng Yang Gate. So click on it up here. Depending on your computer spec, um, choose the resolution. I'm going to use 4096, but if your computer's a bit older, you might want to choose 512 or 1024. If you click on your Render Properties tab, change this to Cycles, change this to GPU Compute, and let's just turn the render samples down while we're here. 64 should be enough and make sure you select the denoise tab as well. If you go into rendered view mode, you can see now we've got our own little private racetrack with this great background and lighting. The next thing we're going to do is get our car drifting. Click on the eyeball to get rid of the blender kit preview at the top. Just press N to close your toolbar. So at the minute, our car does drive along the road, but without any dynamics. So we're going to press 7 for top view. We're going to zoom out a bit. Let's pop back into viewport shading. So our car currently animates across along this path. And to control how it animates, we use the rig. So if you click on the rig around the car, that's this bit here, go into pose mode can actually control a few things on the car. This back control is the drift control. If I press R to rotate, you can see we can actually make the car drift. And while the steering wheels at the front stay parallel to the curve. And this control in the middle here, if I just grab this, you can actually see, you can actually see this makes the car lean in one direction or the other. We're gonna use both these controls to animate the car today. To control how fast the car moves, if you click on the main bone at the bottom, and then click on our bone constraint properties, you can see that we have a keyframe at the start on frame one, just there, that shows the offset factor, and a keyframe right at the end on frame 250, which shows the offset factor here as well. And by moving the offset factor forward and backwards, you can see the car moves down the length of the curve. Now by default, the car is set to move slowly from start as it accelerates, fast through the rest of the animation, then as it gets towards the end of the animation, it starts to slow down again. If we're going to change the speed of the car, we can do that in the graph editor. So if you go to the animation tab, change the window on the left, so it says graph editor. And if we hire, we've, got, we've still got the car rig selected Let's just hide the wheel rotation because we don't need that at the minute. And by pressing period on the number pad key, we can zoom out to see the offset factor, which is this bone constraint just here. So you can see with the curve of the graph, it starts off slowly, speeds up to get faster, and then slows down towards the end. If we want to stop the car from slowing down at the end, we can just simply select the end handle, rotate it, so the acceleration stays constant, the speed stays constant throughout the rest of the animation. So now when we watch the car at the end of the animation, it actually keeps the same speed right to the end of the road. Hop back to your layout tab. We're gonna animate the drifting now. So move your playhead to the start of the animation and we're gonna pop back into pose mode. So if you want to zoom in on the car at any point, press the period key on your number pad and that zooms right into the car where the car is. As the car starts to turn, we want to start drifting. So 
The car will start the turn normally and as it turns it will start to drift probably about here. So select the drift control, press I to insert a keyframe and then click rotation. So the drift is going to start here. By about here I want the drift to be fully out. So press R again to rotate. And we'll have the car drifting out about that far. Press I to add another rotation keyframe. So now you can see from here to here the car starts to drift out. And we can make that a bit clearer. Let's just pop this right on the left. If you click there's a tiny arrow to the left of the playback screen and you can see we've got a little menu in here called summary. If we just look at the drift keyframes for now we can see where they are. So this is where the drift starts with the little keyframe just here. Move along a bit the drift gets wider. We want to leave the car drifting around the corner to about there I think. I to add another rotation keyframe and then we'll want the car to straighten up a bit as it straightens out along the curve. So we'll what we'll do, we'll swing the car, so press R to rotate again, and we'll swing the car just a little bit past parallel. I to add another keyframe, and then we'll let it straighten up in another 20 or so keyframes. So looking from above, the car starts out straight, drifts out round the corner, and then straightens up again. The other thing that happens on a drift is that the body of the car leans. So if we zoom into the car again, we'll click on the top control of the car for the body motion. So at the start of the drift again, we'll press I and this time we'll add a location keyframe. We'll move along a bit and now the car's drifting out, we want the car to be leaning across towards the outside of the track. So press D to grab, move the weight control to the outside of the car, about there. Press I for a location keyframe. Okay, it's still leaning, so press I for another location keyframe there. And then we want the car to start coming back towards its normal position in the road. So press G to grab. Move the cursor. In fact, you can reset it with these numbers here, back to zero. Then press I to add another location keyframe. So now we've got the car driving along the road drifting out and then recentering itself. Okay, once you've got the car drifting and moving as you want it to, it's time to bake the steering and the wheel animation. So press the N key, click on the rigger car tab, set your ground plane to the road profile. This lets rigger car know where the wheels are and how to contact the road. Do that for all of the ground sensors. Then also click Baked Car Steering and click Bake Wheel Rotation. This adds in keyframes for the wheel rotation and the steering. Right, I'm going to spend a little bit of time now adding in some extra detail, some trees and some cameras, and I'll show you what the end result is in a minute. This is a couple of hours later. I've added in some cameras, so we've got four different camera views now. Also in the compositing tab, I've added in some nodes to give the, um, the final render a little bit of a vignette, which is this kind of darkening around the corner. And I've also done a slight color grade with the RGB curves and I added a glare node so we just get a little bit of glow around the highlights. If you want to screenshot that, I'll just put that up there for a second. The other thing I've done, I've added in some trees from Blender Kit just to give a bit of extra detail to the scene and make it a bit more interesting. I've actually included a link to the final file in the description below so you can download it and have a look yourself. Hope you enjoy it.